YouTube, what's up? Let me fix you real quick. Okay, my long lost YouTube people. My it's complicated YouTube relationship. My make some more goddamn. I'm really sorry about the lack of content, but it's been coming out more recently, so that's okay. So we're on the way to the gym right now. It is February. I don't know, February 16th, Friday, February 16th. I'm gonna go work out right now with a homie named Brian Pickowitz. Pickowitz, Pickowitz? He'll have to correct me on that one. I met him at Gold's one of the first weeks I was there, and I was like, what's up, dude? I see you in here all the time. Like, I think I've seen you on Instagram, tagged in the Gold's gym. What's up, my name's Ethan. And from there, it kinda just turned into like, what's up, saying, what's good, homie? Uh, how you doing, how's your day, how's your workout? To us finding out each other vlogged, to now us getting in a wicked arm workout tonight. It's Friday. Got about an hour because I've got to go meet up with someone. We're gonna grab uh, some drinks at a bar. Don't worry, game season is in full effect. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna let that mess me up. So, anyways, that's where I'm headed right now. It is about 5:30 p.m. I'm gonna go meet at Gold's. It's supposed to be at six, so I'm probably be ahead of time, which is good. I like being early, because if you're not early, what is it? If you're early, if you're on time, you're late, and if you're early, you're on time. Something like that. That's 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 kind of the motto I like to go by. So. Yeah, I'll be there in probably about 15 minutes. Gonna sip on this pre-workout. I'm rocking a BSN shirt right now, but this is not BSN pre-workout. This is actually that Illa, Illa pre-workout from my last video, two videos ago, the uh, LA Fit Expo, when I was talking to, what was her name? Um, Margo. Margo. Hey, Margo. What's up, Margo? Uh, yeah, this is that pre-workout. 400 milligrams of caffeine. About 400 milligrams of caffeine. It's fucking delicious, though. Excuse my language. It's like gummy worm flavored. It's like candy, so if you're a candy eater, you'll love it. And it tastes amazing, and I just, ah, I love it. So, that's what we're doing right now. We're gonna go hit arms. Something I need to really work on, because every time I'm in the mirror and I'm like flexing and stuff, like, I'm like, dude, my arms are so far behind in terms of size and the rest of my body, so. That's gonna be a major, major component of the next few months is like just ripping my arms to shreds. And I always think back to when I w had bigger arms when I was like lifting a lot in high school. Obviously, I had bigger arms because I was mainly hitting arms and like chest, like a typical bro would when he's 16, 17 years old. But I had a buddy there to help spot me on all the preacher curls to get you on those negative reps to get everything else dialed in so you could really grind out that last few. That's the plan, guys. I will see you in a few minutes at Gold's Gym and I'll introduce you to Brian Picklewicks. What is going on, guys? All right, Brian. Is it Pickowitz? Pickowitz? It's, yeah, it's a tough one. It depends on where you're from, I guess. <laughs> it's Pickowitz. Pickowitz. So I said it right. Yes. I said it right. All right, we're good. We're going to hit some buys and tries today. We're going to start off with some push downs and some curls and maybe 21s then. Then we're just kind of going to go through it and see what happens. We really don't have a plan. <laughs> we're just kind of going to do it and then go from there. But this is the man I was referring to. What's going on, guys? His channel and his YouTube and Instagram all right here. It's going to be epic. We'll jump right into it. I'll give you guys more feedback. But we're going to work on this and we're going to crush this arm workout. So let's do this. Question is, am I thinking about competing? Yes. Yeah, the answer is yes. I've mentioned in my vlog multiple times. It's like, oh, the plan is to do it this year, probably before August, because I'm going with my family to Hawaii in August. My buddy's like, you don't want to be on prep in Hawaii. Yeah, but then I talked to a few <laughs> trainers here, and they're like, dude, I don't know. You probably got a year, another year of muscle building behind you. I was like, shoot, maybe I should plan to do it next year. Yeah. Like, am I ready? I don't know. Like, I feel, they're like, honestly, you've got the shape. You just need to expand five to ten percent. If you really want to step on stage and kill it. On the contrary, just the other night, literally just the other night, last week, I ran into a couple guys that just met through and through the bodybuilding scene, and they're like, dude, I didn't step on my stage the first time looking like you. I was worse than that. The thing is, you just gotta get one under your belt. Get comfortable competing, do it, quit putting it off. Like, it's not about winning the first time. I mean, obviously I'd love to place well, but like, 
that's the insight he gave me. So now I'm kind of like, yeah. do I do it this year? Do I not? Like, do I wait? Do I put on more size? So I'm kind of in a limbo. I've got at least a few more months until I would have to start prepping for my show if I was to do one this year, but I don't know. I, I welcome your feedback. So I compete, I've competed three times. Um, the first time I competed, I was 21. Yeah. Um, and I'm 24 now. Yeah. So it's been a gradual process. The first time I competed, I got first in my junior class. Wow. I got second in my debut. Um, but it's kind of this thing where you, you should, you have to do it. Like, yeah. Because I think it's so easy to be like, oh, I'm going to do it in two years when I'm ready. And it's like, first off, you don't know who's going to be there, so you might just come in and kick everyone's ass. That's what I'm saying. And at the same time, like, if you're in the position where, like, yeah, you have a better build than anyone who would be starting off, it's worth the value of just doing it. Because then you can adjust. Yeah. And it's kind of the same if you guys are watching and you're kind of like, oh, should I compete? Should I be doing it this way or that way? You get to a place where... Once you do a first contest, you actually know how good you look. And I know how my body responds to prep. And and the leaner you get, the better your body actually will adjust to the food you give it. So I think it's worth doing a contest. Unless your ambition is to right now go pro, like right now. Yeah. Like that might be what you end up doing down the line. Of course, and but I, no, I don't need that. It's not like, hey, I need to go pro my first time without some failure. Exactly. It's not it at all. And so I think that it's worth opening the door. Okay. Because if not, you're kind of looking at it as, ah, what do I want to do? And then you might not hit that door again. That makes sense. Because I think that the guy that I talked to that told me like, hey, you should be doing Doing this like like next year like you got more size you got potential like let's do it next year I think he wanted me to step on stage and absolutely crush it which of course I can see, see why yeah but why not if I could perform well right now why not just like get one under my belt and try absolutely. it that's kind of what I'm leaning towards because I was so stoked to do it this year I was like hell yeah I'm doing it this year then I heard that news I was like wait I gotta wait another year yeah. like no we'll, we'll see fuck we'll that see. The great thing about doing, I think I put this in my last video, but the great thing about doing a bicep and a tricep exercise is you get such a great pump and you can feel the muscle working. So then coming to 21s here, it's just straight contraction, straight yeah. pump. So yep. it's going perfect. It's a great add-in on your second movement. I actually haven't done a alternating workout like this in a while. And I know what you mean. Like when you come down, you feel the tricep full of blood, but then you come right back up and it's just like, well, it's the thing like when you're standing here, like I'm standing here right now and I can just feel that my muscles are working. I feel it's, like Zeus. I feel like Zeus. Like, that's why I say it. Boom Zeus. You know, that's, that's how I feel. Any words of wisdom? Uh, that hurts. I need to work on my triceps. I want Julian Smith triceps. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about where he's just down here and it's like, boom. So for the longest time, I didn't want to be that tall skinny guy that had big arms and like no legs. So I literally stopped working out arms. Probably like two year period. Post college, and like actually like senior year college, like post college, I was just doing compound movements. Squat, bench, deadlift, some shoulder work. And while I built everything out more proportional than what I used to be when I was just bro lifting, my arms suffered a little bit in return. So now that I'm starting to do arms again, I'm like watching them like, Get a little bigger. So, so just, like I said, tall guy syndrome. Tall guy syndrome. <laughs> and it's a real thing, like when you gotta like move this weight a long way, you know, and like fill in this muscle belly that's this big as opposed to someone that's this tall and they got this little Whatever, I'm not complaining. I'd rather be tall any day. Again, another Julian Smith reference. <laughs> Have you ever seen him do these where he's like, one, yeah. two. It's good because it throws you off. Like your body naturally just wants to come and bring this one up, but if you just keep it locked here. I usually do three, three, two, two, yeah. one, one, but I couldn't, I was dead. It's a good drop sound. So. Yeah, it is. Like, I mean, that's what I try and do. Like if, I'm, if I still like, got gas in the tank, I'll just improvise. I'll be like, all right, how many more can I do? Sometimes it's not super conducive if you're trying to stick to a program and you have certain sets and rep ranges, but sometimes my ADD kicks in and I'm like, what else can I do right now? <laughs> or I'll be waiting to do my next set and I'll go over here and do like pull-ups and a dumbbell curl or whatever. Like, what am I doing? Like, stick to your plan, it'll be all right, but I don't sometimes know. You don't have to. <laughs> sometimes I just do this. hit 
tricep push downs with straight bar curls, with 21s. Then we went into, what are we going to next? Uh, push, oh, push downs, tricep dips, like dip push downs. And then dumbbell curls, dumbbell. overhead extensions, and now wrapping up with the preacher curl. We're gonna get three quick sets, pump it out. Yeah, I feel bad. We're kind of having to end this a little early because I had to get out of here at like 7.15ish, so that's my fault. Next workout we do though is gonna be much longer, and it's gonna be like a full on, like, back and by or chest and try, not just some arm workout. I really do just arms, but it was Friday, taking tomorrow off, worked out most of the dates this week, so I had to get it in. And Brian's the homie, so. Grinding it out. You're oh. set, let's go. We gotta get out of here. All right, guys, we just finished up a workout. Brian, the man, what do you got to say about that? I have to say that that was one of the best arm days I've had in a long time. Come on, you're making me feel bad. No, okay. it, was like, it was like an hour long. It was, like it was a good pump. You don't need, it's not time. I have a saying that goes something like, more isn't better, better is better. Yes. So pushing yourself more, pushing yourself for better reps is more important than coming in for two hours and Honestly, moving through it. That reminds me a lot about the quote, stimulate, don't annihilate. Yeah, you know what I mean? Haney, yeah. Haney, exactly. So it's just like you get in there, you get your muscles moving, working, and you leave feeling amazing tomorrow you'll be sore you'll know you worked hard but uh you know we talked a little bit about me why don't you tell the people you know what you're doing in la where you're from tell us about your coaching services when you started at golds i don't know give yeah, me, yeah. Give so, the rundown. so i've been a uh, fitness and lifestyle coach for the last three years i moved from new hampshire about eight months ago because my business had grown so much i've worked with over 300 clients in about three years so it's been a really successful trend and what i try to do is teach people the fundamentals of fitness so they can transform their whole life my whole thing is you need to set a foundation for yourself and most of the things that we deal with internal struggles you know any of those kinds of things come from how we feel about ourselves so I get my clients to really focus on building their best selves and then everything else becomes a lot easier so when me and my girlfriend Lindsay we moved to LA about eight months ago and it's been an incredible journey so far so you can find me on my Instagram you can find me on there but above all else just here to inspire and train hard you know it's a blast being at the Mecca oh. people like Ethan it just makes the yeah. difference in the world you know we were talking earlier about like you know how we met and I think I think I just was like one that we see we kept seeing each other in the gym is like respect to another big yes. guy. Head yeah. nods. And then one day I was like, I walked up, I was like, what's up, dude? I see you here all the time. Like, yeah. I might as well just introduce myself. Yeah. Like, yeah. my name's Ethan. He's like, Brian, what's up, man? I was like, all right, this guy's cool. <laughs> see him on Instagram. I was like, all right, awesome. So, is your coaching services like a wide array? Like anything, like what people want to do? Is it kind of like people that haven't started fitness before it's, it's that want to compete, it's, or is it like it's everyone? Most, I'd say I'd say 97 because it's such a big number. Uh, 95, 97 percent of my clients have never competed, have zero ambition to compete. Yeah. I have no ambition to work with competitors, even though I've competed in the past myself. Um, most of my clients are either like middle-aged women, people who are in their 20s to 30s who used to be really fit and fell out of grace, or like I have some clients who are in their 50s who are just like you know I really want to change. My my body so it's all spectrums but I think that it's one thing that ties them all together it's people who are in the mindset to change and so it's anyone who's really in the place where they want to develop those skills and develop those habits that's who I work with. Awesome well cool man awesome workout. Thank you Zeus. Love it we got to uh, we got to wrap this up about now uh, great Friday night probably one of the best places I'd love to spend a Friday night <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's about it crush we're gonna it, crush Zeus. it later guys.